So once you get into Tinkercad, you'll come to a screen which looks like this. Um, now we want to create a 3D design. So please click on 3D designs over here if it's not selected and then choose create new design. Okay, now the Tinkercad application starts up um, and if you've ever used 3D design software before this might look quite familiar. So we have a flat surface which is our tabletop or if we were printing this design out then this would be the bottom of the 3D printer. Now we can move around the flat surface by holding down the right mouse button and then moving the mouse and that will rotate the view around. Now if I want to move the view left or right I can hold down the middle mouse button and then move the mouse to the left or right course you need a middle mouse button to have to do that so if you're on a Mac you might be out of luck. Um, now as well as rotating the board around and moving it to sides I can click on the sides of this cube over here to view it from different angles so if I want to view the board from the top I just click on top and it will rotate around so that I've got a view from the top if I want to view it from the side I could just click on the side of the cube and it will show me the view from the side. Now if the board gets into a position where it's a bit too crazy I can't really make sense of it I can always just click the home icon on the left hand side here. Now there's a few other features for example I can click here um, and that's going to adjust the board so that I can see all of it um, in case uh, I'm zoomed in too much um, and I can't see what I'm doing. And I can also zoom in or out using the plus or minus symbols. Now the last one here is a little bit um, unusual if you haven't uh, done 3D modeling before. So this icon allows you to switch between a 2D and a 3D view. So when you're working in 3D you have perspective um, and that normally is quite useful to give you an idea of judging distances but sometimes it's not useful and you actually want to work in two dimensions so if you click on that button it will switch into a two-dimensional view and you can do two-dimensional work until it looks right and then go back into three dimensions um, so that's quite handy to switch between them using that button okay so um, what I'm going to do is just to give you an idea of how we do some simple 3D modeling with Tinkercad I'm going to create a model of uh, my cup. Um, so I've got a cup on the table beside me um, and I'm going to uh, try to create a simple version of that cup in Tinkercad. Now um, when you're modeling a 3D object it's really good if you actually have measurements for it so um, unfortunately I don't have a ruler here at the moment but if you do have a ruler then I recommend um, that when you're creating a, a 3D model of something in your house that you actually use a ruler and measure the dimensions because it's going to create a more realistic model if you know exactly what the dimensions are. I'm just going to do approximations at the moment because like I said I don't have a ruler. Okay so um, in order to create uh, my cup I'm going to start off with a simple cylinder shape. So everything that we build in Tinkercad is made out of simple shapes there's lots of basic shapes on the menu here and there are some more complicated shapes um, if you select one of these menus but we're mostly going to be sticking with these basic shapes and in particular the shape that I want to use now is the cylinder so I click on the cylinder and then I move the mouse over to here and you can see that the cylinder is ghosted on the surface like that until I click the left mouse button okay now once I click the left mouse button the cylinder appears okay I can change the color if I want to so I can pick a yellow color for my cup um, and what I want to do now is just to adjust the size of that cylinder so that it matches what I want my cup size to be so I'll click on the cylinder and then I'm going to go down into this uh, corner of the cylinder and you can see that when I hover over that corner it shows me the measurements so those 20s um, that appear there are millimeter measurements. If I was printing this out, this would be 20 millimeters across and 20 millimeters uh, on the other side. 
So I want to change that. I actually think my cup is about 10 centimeters across in diameter. So I'm going to click in that corner and then I'm going to go over to here and click on the number and 10 centimeters is 100 millimeters so I'll type 100 into here and then over here I'm going to do the same. I'll click in this box and type 100. Okay and there's my sugar. Uh, now if you make a mistake just hold down control and press Z to bring it back to uh, where you were before. Okay so here's the cylinder for my cup. Um, it's uh, fairly large I think maybe 10 centimeters was an overestimate. Um, I might make it only uh, 6 centimeters because I think 10 centimeters is probably a going a bit crazy. Okay, let's change it to six centimeters. That looks more reasonable. Okay, so um, here's, here's the cylinder that is going to be my cup. Now, I want it to be a little bit taller as well, so I'm going to click on that box and I can just pull it up to make the height of my cup. Um, I'm not going to bother measuring that exactly because I'm just going to approximate what looks right and six and a half centimeters there yeah that probably looks okay maybe I'll make it a little bit taller maybe seven centimeters okay I think that's about right okay um, now the next thing is that I want my cup to have a handle um, so I'm gonna go down and if I look through these shapes I can see tube or torus those look like I might be able to make handle out of it or ring um, so um, let's pick the torus I think and I'll bring it over here and drop it onto the surface. Now at the moment obviously that torus is flat on the surface so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make it um, rotate so that it aligns with where I want the handle to be in the direction. So if you look here you can see there's some arrows. I click on those arrows and then I can click on the box and enter an angle. So if I enter the angle 90, it's going to rotate that torus around so that it's uh, standing up like that. Okay, now I want to move that over to um, my the cup handle position. So let's move it up a little bit. Let's make it a little bit bigger as well. So again, I'll click on this side. I'm going to make the width maybe, let's try 50 millimeters. And then I want to make the height um, up here. Let's make the height um, 60 millimeters. Uh, okay, there we go. Okay. Um, now it's also very thin for a handle so I think I probably want to make it a little bit wider than that. Instead of 5 millimeters, let's make it 20 millimeters. Okay, great. That is mm, handle-ish. Okay, now I want to put this handle on the side of my mug. So the first thing I've got to do is make the handle and the mug line up. Right, you can see at the moment that handle is wonky. It's not lined up with the mug. So in order to do that, the first thing I have to do is select both objects. So you might notice at the moment that there's a little blue glow around the outside of my handle. To make it easier to see, I'll change the color of my handle. And there you are. You can see there's a blue glow around the outside. If I click on the mug, the blue glow moves to the mug. So that blue glow shows which object is selected at any time. Now if I want to, I can select both objects at the same time. To do that, I select one object first. So I select the mug and then I hold down the shift key and then I click on the other object while holding down the shift key. OK, so both objects are selected now. Now, if I go over to the top right, there's an icon which says Align and I click that. Now this allows me to line up the objects so that they are neatly lined up on the same uh, same axis. 
So in this case I want them to line up along here. So I click on this black dot and you notice that that moves the handle so that it's lined up with the mug. Okay. Now the handle's still too high so I'm going to need to move it down a little bit. So if I click on the handle I'm just going to click away so that I deselect everything and then click on the handle and using this arrow I can move it down until it's roughly in the right place. Now I also want to move it across so that it goes inside the mug. So in order to do that I probably want to go to the top view so that I'm looking from the top um, and then I'm just going to Oh, sorry, that's the wrong point. Again, I've made a mistake, so I'll hold down Control and press Z. And then I'm just going to click on that handle and pull it into the mug. Let's look from the side. Not bad, not bad. OK. Um, so I'll go to the top. I'm just going to align those again to make absolutely sure that they're lined up neatly. OK, they are. It's fine. OK, so now I've got my mug and I've got a handle for my mug. Now, those are two separate objects which are overlapping. But what I want to do is I want to combine them to make them one object. So I'm going to select the handle and then holding down shift, I'm going to select the mug so that both of them are selected. And this time I'm going to choose this icon, group. When I click on group, They've become the same object, which means that they have the same color. And the handle is now joined to the mug. OK, so that's now one object. OK, now I've got a mug, but this mug is of limited usefulness because it doesn't have any place for the water to go. So it, do, it needs to have a hole in the middle. It needs to have a, um, a basin. OK, so the way to do that is I'm going to need another cylinder. So I click on cylinder again and I come over here and I drop the cylinder onto the surface. Now I'm going to need to make that cylinder bigger and this is going to be a cylinder which represents the size of my hole. So in the middle of the mug I want to hollow out an area and let's say that this hollowed out area is going to be um, 50 millimeters in either direction. So I'll put 50 on that side and then I'll put 50 on this side. Okay, and that cylinder hopefully is going to be just a little bit smaller than the mug. Let's um, zoom in again and uh, I'll change the color so that they're not the same color so that it's easier for me to see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to pull it up in the air a little bit. OK, and now if I click on the top view so that I'm looking from the top and I'm going to click on that 2D view so that I switch to a 2D perspective and now I can just drag that cylinder over the mug and it looks like a pretty good fit. OK, so I've positioned the cylinder over the top of the mug. If I look at it from another angle you can see that that cylinder is exactly over the top of the mug. Now that's still in 2D view. If I click on that, I'll switch back to 3D view. But in this particular situation, the 2D view is helpful because it allows me to line things up more accurately. OK, so I'll click on top. Now I want to line that up exactly with the mug. So I'm going to use that alignment trick that I showed you before. I click on the yellow bit at the top. And then I hold down shift and click on the mug. And then I go up here and choose a line. And oh, it actually looks like I've aligned it perfectly already. OK, that's handy. So now I've got two objects. And one of them is this yellow object on the top. Let's put it back in 3D. Now that yellow object, I want to drag it down. Oh, and that's the wrong one. Let's, uh, let's just see if I can get the right to drag it down. Maybe it's easiest if I move it up a little bit first. OK, now I think I can drag it. One of these is going to be the height. 
there we go okay so I click on that one that box there and then when I pull it the cylinder gets taller now what I want to do is actually pull the cylinder taller and then move it down until that cylinder is almost but not quite at the bottom of the cup so you can tell that by looking at that black line there that this yellow cylinder is fitting inside the cup but it hasn't quite got to the bottom okay and the top of the yellow cylinder is still poking out of the cup now the last step is I change that yellow color into this which is a hole so basically what I'm saying is instead of making this out of um, yellow plastic or something like that I actually want this yellow cylinder to represent space so I click on the hole and that means that this is going to be a hole in the middle of the cup now just like I join the handle to the cup I'm now going to join the hole to the cup so I click on the hole and then I hold down shift and click on the cup and then I go to the group icon and click and after a moment it's created that hole in my cup so guys there you can see I've made a 3D cup um, probably I could drink from it um, if I wanted to give it a go now um, it would be possible to print this on a 3D printer um, the handle would maybe be a little bit difficult to print but it should work um, obviously 3d printing a cup um, would not be suitable for hot drinks um, so um, that would be a good way to uh, uh, poison yourself a little bit with some nasty melted plastic um, so please don't try uh, 3d printing yourself a cup at home and then drinking from it uh, if you 3d print a cup um, then it's for ornamental purposes only or maybe you can put some pens in it or something like that okay guys I hope you enjoyed um, this initial foray into uh, Tinkercad um, and we'll have a look at making some more complex models a little bit later um, but if you want to experiment why not pick something on your desk or nearby in your home um, and have a go at making that on Tinkercad using the shapes that we've looked at and especially if you have a ruler then measure the object before you create it so that you can get an object in Tinkercad which accurately represents what you're trying to make in the real world.